Greetings brothers. Today we're continuing to compare various units within the 9th edition of Warhammer 40,000. I just want to say thank you for all the support I've had recently and especially all the subscribers. I hope this series continues to bring you guys value on the tabletop and I really hope you enjoy the video. If we're just meeting, my name's John, the Blood Angels Commander. Welcome to the channel. Here our one focus is the 9th Legion of Space Marines, the Sons of Swanguinius, the Emperor's Finest, the Blood Angels. So this week we're going to compare the good old school captain, this is the game day captain from the early 90s, against a brand new Primaris captain. This is actually a store anniversary uh, Primaris captain, which was kind of supposed to be a play on this guy. But yeah, I wanted to see how they would fit into the army, especially with some changes coming with 9th. There's maybe some new uh, interesting options, especially with Power Fists. So yeah, let's get straight right into it. And I will also be comparing some of the options you have, because Primaris are kind of still limited a bit with what options and weapons they can have, whereas the, the captain, if we know him in the Blood Angels, there's a lot this guy can do. So um, yeah, let's jump right into it. So point cost is the first thing to start with. So the old captain is 80 points, and uh, I think for this video, since he is an old captain, I think we're just going to refer to him from now on as uh, Cap like good old Captain America. Uh, I think it's just gonna make it easier because I'm probably gonna say Captain a million times in this video. So as I'm sure all Blood Angels players are aware, you can pay 25 points for this Captain, putting him up to 105 points to a jump pack, giving him the 12 inch movement and giving him the fly keyword and opening up a ton of different uh, relics and traits and all sorts of things that he can take. So um, yeah, 25 points here is uh, it's usually points well spent. So the Primaris Captain is 85 points, just 5 more than Old Cap, and throughout the video you should see if those 5 points really uh, equate to any additional value. So both Cap and the Primaris Captain save on a 3+, plus. Uh, they have a 4+, plus and vulnerable save, and Cap has 5 wounds, Primaris Captain has 6 wounds, so I guess that's the first difference you see, and it's kind of, those are where those extra points are going, so some of them are literally going into the additional wound the Primaris Captain has. So we have some options when we talk about making them more uh, survivable. Uh, the old captain could pay 1 CP and join the death company via death visions of Sanguinius, giving him a 6 plus feel no pain with a reroll of 1s. He could then become your warlord or a hero of the chapter and take gift of foresight, so now he uh, feel no pains on 5 and 6s, still rerolling 1s. So uh, that is one way to make um, old cap a little bit more survivable. If you don't want to use your Warlord trait to take Gift of Foresight, you can also pay 1 CP on any turn where it's hairy to basically use Refusal to Die to get the save of uh, the 6 plus Feel No Pain improved to 5 or 6 with the reroll 1 still. Soul Cap can give up his Chainsword and this lets him take a Storm Shield for 10 additional points, changing the Invulnerable save to 3 plus. Or if you didn't want to spend the CP to join um, the Death Company, which I think is usually a, a valuable CP to spend because as well as the save uh, it gives you attacks, we'll come on to that later, but um, you could take the Adamantium Mantle uh, and that just gives a flat 5 or 6 uh, feel no pain uh, roll um, essentially and that can be put on both uh, your regular captain or your Primaris captain. So your Primaris captain essentially can get the same feel no pain. Obviously he's not in the death company so he can't reroll ones on his feel no pain. So it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit weaker but you don't have to spend the CP. However obviously it is a relic so you kind of you, you, you would use that up as your relic slot. So in shooting both characters hit on twos. Cap is rocking a master crafted uh, bolt gun with um, rapid fire 1, minus 1 AP, 2 damage. However, he can replace this with like a pistol, a combi weapon, or a close combat weapon. For the Primaris Captain, you have two types of master crafted bolt rifle. You have the assault version, which is 24 inch, uh, 3 shots, no AP, 2 damage a shot. Or you have the heavy version, which is a heavy 1, 36 inches, uh, minus 2, and uh, 3 damage a shot. So yeah, our only option with Primaris Marines is to swap out his Mastercrafted Bolt Rifle and Bolt Pistol for the Plasma Pistol and uh, Power Fist you see in this model, which is a little bit disappointing considering how long Primaris have been, Marines have been out. And this guy is only available once a year in store, like you literally have to go in store to get him, so if you're not close to a store it's a bit of a nightmare. I've seen this guy go on eBay like just last week for like three to four times retail value. So um, yeah, I mean get him if you can, but... Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit disappointing how few customization options these guys still have um, two and a half years in. 
I think these guys are pretty average at shooting. Uh, the Primaris Captain, I suppose, uh, you can shoot your plasma pistol in high power pretty reliably because you reroll ones on shooting, uh, which is sort of the default captain trait. Um, your old cap could take a combi weapon. Uh, one of the options that I thought might be interesting would be like a combi plasma gun. Uh, again, you could be shooting on high power, re-rolling your ones. I mean, you could put a jump back on him, I believe, and you could take a storm shield. And you could be jumping around uh, trying to pop some targets, but uh, I think the strength of the cap, the old cap is much more in close combat. So good old cap has uh, four attacks, five from Angels of Death, six if we join the Death Company earlier, seven once we get into turn three from uh, Savage Echoes, pay one CP for Red Rampage if you want to get an additional three D3, so that's up to ten attacks, and then we hit on twos and because we're a captain we re-roll ones. So our Primaris Captain starts with one extra attack, however he isn't in the Death Company, so we get the one from um, Shock Assault and we get the other one uh, after turn 3 from Savage Echoes, so he has the same 7, so the same one CP gives him the same 10 attacks, hitting on 2s again and also re-rolling ones. So you can see that one CP we paid earlier kind of balances out with the 5 points, so they're kind of identical at that point, there's very little to tell, take them apart in that uh, attacks, armor, uh, shooting, it's all its all much and such. So anyone that's played Blind Angels knows about putting a thunder hammer on your captain with the jump pack. Uh, here's one I made earlier. Um, I have another that I made earlier as well. Uh, never mind. Um, so, once you equip the thunder hammer, you now hit on threes. You re-roll your ones, same as before. So uh, you get a good portion of those ten attacks, or eight to ten attacks through, depending on how you did with your red thirst. Um, once you are hitting, you're hitting with strength eight with plus one to wound rolls. So toughness seven, you're wounding on twos. Or, sorry, toughness seven and below, you're wounding on twos. Toughness eight, you're wounding on threes. Toughness nine and ten, you're wounding on fours. So once you're in there, you're definitely hitting. You're definitely doing a lot of wounds. And... Um, it's minus three for until you get to the Salt Doctrine. I think, personally, I'm always in Assault Doctrine as soon as I can be, so that's turn three, and then it's minus four. The Warlord trait I really like to use on my Captain Smash is Artisan of War, giving them plus one damage. So essentially, once you get through that, once you do that, every hit is four damage, and uh, obviously we can pay if the enemy managed to kill him in close combat, or if we don't get killed, we can pay to fight again in the same turn, which I think is potentially very valuable depending on what high value target uh, your captain could be in against. Now something that I'm kind of glad that I never made this model now because I was kind of thinking that um, something that might be interesting is power fists are maybe going to be flat two damage, and they really increased the cost of thunder hammers in the last edition, like they went from, I think it was maybe like 16 points all the way up to like 40 points. So Power Fists haven't had that treatment yet and Power Fists are maybe becoming a flat 2 damage. They still hit with minus 1 so you still hit on 3s, uh, re-roll your 1s. Um, but if these do become a flat 2 damage then it could be a real interesting option to get like a low cost smash captain. You could add the Artisan of War so the Power Fist is now 3 damage so it's kind of like it was a thunder hammer but for 25 points less so that's an interesting combo maybe this guy as much as I want to paint him like he is on the box uh, he's been in there so long maybe he's been waiting to become a smash captain uh, and maybe we would go with the yellow colors there so saying all that uh, maybe that makes Mr. Primaris captain a little bit more interesting with this weapon loadout the plasma pistol and the power fist he is uh, 100 points um, Pay your, make him your warlord, give him artisan of war, and uh, the power fist's doing three damage a pop. Put him in an impulsor or something. Exit the repulsor three inches away, move his six, and then charge. He's got 21 inch uh, engagement range, potentially. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I could see this. Up until now, I've been less interested in this because I just felt power fists were kind of unreliable. But three damage every time power fist, maybe that changes things. So yeah, obviously all the wounds and that are the same for the Power Fist. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below how you feel about Power Fists and Artisan of War. Because uh, yeah, I mean it's, uh, it's, it's definitely interesting. And sometimes you just need to squeeze some extra points out of your army. Maybe it makes the difference between getting something large. And yeah, let me know. So obviously the captain with the jump pack is a bit more mobile and he has a fly keyboard and he can move 12 and he can redeploy anywhere in the battlefield using upon wings of fire. So there's that to consider. Um, it depends on how mobile you want your captain to be. Um, 
do you need them to get exactly where you want them straight away then then this is the one big advantage that the regular uh, captains have over the Primaris Marines and uh, when I was jokingly showing you uh, two uh, earlier this one on the left is already on a Primaris size base so I can't really use him he's kind of been made in preparation for like hey we're gonna get a smash Primaris captain so he's waiting and he's on the old size smaller captain base so I'm ready and uh, we're just waiting on Games Workshop but it's really not hard not to put value on the the power of the captain with the jump pack. Um, he can get anywhere on the map in the same turn and he can almost guarantee a charge. We'll come back to that later. So leadership on these characters is kind of irrelevant. Um, so let's just move straight on past it. So when we talk about warlord traits, historically Artisan of War is great. Gift of Foresight, which we talked about as well, is great. However, what's interesting now, I think, is Speed of the Primarch. With the change of the fight phase, and where you fight first in the enemy's phase if you've not been charged, then Speed of the Primarch lets you fight first even if you have been charged. So it may be a way for uh, people to be scared to even engage this character in close combat, because on the charge there's still a chance that you decide. You don't have to, but you can decide to fight first. So then if we talk about relics, uh, our jump captain, our smash captain, good old Cap, um, he obviously can take the angel's wings, which lets him reroll charges and lets him ignore overwatch. Now this was crazy powerful last edition, and I guess against some armies, like maybe ultramarines or tau, the ignore overwatch will also still be very powerful. So I feel like it's almost something you really want to take. But the other side of the angel's wings is it kind of guarantees your charge, right? The reroll of your charge is super powerful, especially if you want to um, redeploy somewhere on the map and guarantee a charge using like Upon Wings of Fire and then Descent of the Angels. So if you are actually rolling the three dice with the Descent of the Angels stratagem and you have the reroll and the charge, uh, an eight inch charge, which is what, sorry, a nine inch charge, but a roll of eight. You need eight because Blood Angels get the plus one. A roll of eight on 3d6, if you attempt that twice, the chances of that are actually 97.5%. Um, I'm gonna do another video where I explain charge uh, percentages to people, just to help you. You know, like when you're in the, the midst of a battle, sometimes you want to know if it's worth charging or not. And if you know the percentages in your head, then you can really make a, a good call on that. So keep an eye out for that video, it's coming soon. Um, but yeah, so it's a 97.5% charge with the Angel's Wings and the Redeploy. So that that is a go-to for many people in the previous editions, and I feel like it probably still is a go-to this edition. So we're going to make one of our weapons Master Crafted for one additional damage. So I want to know, have you ever done that? I mean, you could take your Power Fist, you could Master Craft it so it's three damage, and then you could uh, take Artisan of War so it's potentially four damage. So you have a four damage Power Fist on a 100 point character. So that seems like it'd be pretty strong. Something else you can do is you can take digital weapons, which means you roll to hit. So you roll to hit on your two plus, real rolling ones. And if you do hit, you just do one additional mortal wound. That's also quite strong. A new one that was added in the Blood of Baal book is the Icon of the Angel, which gives you and everybody around you within three inches the ability to reroll charges. Again, quite strong. And then finally, the Adamantium Mantle, which we talked about at the very start, which gives uh, you a five plus feel no pain. Um, so you could put that on either character. If for some reason you didn't want your character to join the death company, uh, you could do that that way. So yeah, in conclusion, the captain that can jump around all over the board, the old cap, he has been strong for a few additions now. I've seen um, my old cap jump in to a super heavy tank, take him out in one turn, take out a titan in one turn. I mean, nothing really changed there in terms of the only thing that changed is, is he went up a, a, quite a bit in points. I think he used to be 129, he's now 155. Um, however, if they do change Thunder Hammers to be 4 damage, then tell me in the comments below, would you just go Artisan of War on that Thunder Hammer anyway and just be like, right, 5 damage Thunder Hammers. Like, 5 damage Thunder Hammers when you potentially have 10 attacks or 10 hits I suppose and you're wounding on twos so uh, yeah I mean and then like I said you can pay to fight for a second time or if they do fight back and kill you you can pay again to honour the chapter and fight one last time um, I mean it's pretty much it sounds disgusting if Thunder Hammers are going to go to 4 power so um, 4 damage sorry so your good old captain he can be jumping around and he can do a lot of work 
uh, very few games does he not kill more than the points that he costs. And I know that some Blood Angels players, since they introduced like the hero of the chapter, um, definitely run like two Smash Captains. That's something you can definitely uh, you can make that happen in in games as well. So what about a Primaris Captain? Well, we've talked about how the Power Fist could be actually quite brutal and his point cost could be quite low. However, if you did keep his um, like bolt rifle, mastercrafted bolt rifle, and he had the assault version of it, where you can do six damage a turn, and he had a power sword. Power swords are rumored to be going to plus one user strength, so it would be a strength five um, power sword. So you wound on uh, against toughness fours on uh, twos, and you wound on toughness five at threes, and toughness six and above at fours. So you're still wounding pretty reliably on that power sword. So. Yeah, I feel like uh, a Primaris Captain has got quite a bit more attractive, but the one thing that like we're just scrying out for is a few more weapon options. Um, I'm really hoping that like the mid-tier box, you know, kind of we got Shadow Spear in the middle of 8th edition, I'm hoping that the box that comes halfway through this edition has a few more options for sort of like Primaris Captains. If we go back to the very start where we talked about the Primaris Captain being 5 points more with, I mean, that that's before weapon loadout obviously when you add the weapon both are weapon loadouts at that point are just five points so it's 85 points against 90 and um, so there's really nothing in it in terms of uh, in terms of cost and yeah they kind of both do the same thing and um, I really would like to see now that we've got death company intercessors I really like to see death visions of sanguinius be changed so you could use it on primaris characters i don't think it would be too powerful i think you would just get one extra attack because like i said there's already ways to get that five plus feel no pain on the primaris character so all you'd really gain is an additional attack uh, which you'd be paying one cp to get um and then yeah i mean are primaris getting jump packs i feel like it's an overlooked or uh as a Blood Angels player, I feel like, especially with like some of our key units, Sanguinary Guard, Death Company, we're all about close combat. We're all about having jump packs. Uh, the Primaris missing them kind of just limits our ability to take them in the battle, right? Like, um, I've got nothing against that Primaris Captain. I think he's a cool model. Obviously, I spent time painting him, but if it comes to actual battlefield, most of the time I'm going to try and find those extra 25 points just to get that very mobile captain with almost the guaranteed guaranteed charge from Deep Strike. So yeah, if you have any ideas for what models you would like me to compare next, uh, I would love to hear them in the comments below. And if you have any comments about the video or any mistakes, I'm sure I made some mistakes, there's a lot to get through. Uh, hopefully, though, the video really helps you and brings some value and uh, lets you decide um, going forward what you might take. Um, or at least gives you some options. So thanks again for tuning in and I really appreciate the support. By the blood are we made. Peace.